back with another installment of the tube amp project. What I've done this evening is, well at first I started to mount the transformers and then I decided to step back from mounting the second one. This is where the first one was going to go. And to do some experimenting with the placement of the transformers. Uh, placement of the transformers and their proximity to each other, uh, their orientation, uh, is really important in amplifiers. Uh, you'd really want to get these uh, output transformers as far away from each other as possible. You know, this one's the left channel, one's the right channel, uh, because magnetic flux um, extends out beyond uh, the core of the transformer and can the can interact with the other transformer and cause a, a version of crosstalk. However, when you're dealing with uh, a single chassis stereo uh, tube amplifier, you know you're you have certain limitations as far as proximity. They're going to be close to each other. Uh, for example, uh, this is my Fisher 500B, and you can see that they're, they're right next to each other. Um, Certainly with a power transformer, you want it, it oriented 90 degrees. You can see how the laminations are running in this direction. You want this oriented 90 degrees with respect to the uh, output transformers. You see the laminations are running that direction. <clears throat> and that um, helps to prevent any uh, 60 hertz noise uh, from being induced uh, into the output primaries. and which would follow through right to the secondary to the uh, to the speakers. In my case I don't have a, a power transformer so the concern now is just the proximity and orientation of uh, these output transformers. Um, so I'm gonna get to that next. I've got a really uh, interesting experiment here uh, that I'm gonna do and I'll explain that in a minute and uh, you'll you'll hear what I'm talking about. Um, but first, what I did today, um, I had the transformer, one of them mounted here, and then I took it off to, to perform this experiment that I'm about to do, um, is I decided to put some feet on the cigar box, because eventually I'm going to have some, some holes in the bottom uh, to allow a uh, natural convection process to um, to draw some, some cool air in through the bottom. and. Uh, will go out to the top around some holes that are drilled um, around the tubes. Um, vacuum tubes, if you can see it on this one, not really clear on that one, but vacuum tubes, uh, you know, they heat up and, and they start a natural convection process where the heat around the tube will rise. And if you put little uh, holes uh, around the tube itself um, that will help through the natural convection process draw air from inside the amp through those actually from the bottom inside um, and then out through the holes and up and it helps keep the uh, interior ventilated in the interior there will be some heat generated by uh, by resistors there are a couple of power resistors not much heat but you want to at least have a way for that heat to escape and hence you want to have the amp elevated off of the surface you're laying it on for that reason and other reasons, uh, vibration, isolation uh, as well. So what I did, because I'm, I've, uh, I'm at the limit of my budget, so I'm at this point I'm stuck with parts I had on hand, so um, I looked around for something that would work and I ended up going with these cabinet knobs that I have had them for quite some time and that's what you see here I stained them I had some uh, cherry stain and it matched it actually matched pretty good and then I just screw them in
the screws are all mis mismatched, but uh, that's okay. So I'm, again, I'm using what I have on hand. I'm not going to go to the hardware store and buy matching hardware for for this project. So we have our our feet, and they're sitting on these envelopes because they're still drying, but because uh, I just stained them. And you know, it's also they're also wood feet, and it kind of kind of goes with the theme of of uh, this wooden amp built on a cigar box. Okay, I'm going to do two things uh, in this video besides show you the feet on the amp. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, show you some experiments with placement of the transformers. I'm going to put a signal through one and uh, and then listen to listen to any um, any of that signal that's induced into the other transformer. Um, and just also going to test the output tubes that I received in the mail. There we go. I think I'm going to test them. I don't know if my if my old Heath kit tube tester um, actually has settings for this this tube. I'm not exactly sure how rare this tube is. The uh, 60 FX5. So I'm going to have to pull that tester out and see if I have settings to test it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to test the tubes and <clears throat> and then experiment with the output transformer placement. Because as I said, I, I had I had mounted one transformer here, and then I realized, you know, before I drill holes for the other one, I better figure out the best placement for them. I mean, are they going to be side by side like those, or is there a better placement to uh, to reduce noise as much as possible? So. Um, that's what I'm going to do. So first I'm going to do the tube test. I'm going to hit pause here and get that set up. Okay, so I put one of the uh, um, one of the tubes, the 60FX5s, in the miniature socket and it's glowing. That's a good sign. The filament's working. And I just hit the little test button and it falls into the good range. And I won't go through the other details, but I'm about to move these uh, levers around and test for shorts and opens and test the filament. I have another video on YouTube that describes how to use this tube testers if, uh, if you're interested. Um, but I won't go through that process here. Um, but the tube is looking good as a new old stock. I don't know how long this thing has been laying around, but it is still testing good so I'm gonna put this down and and uh, again check for opens and shorts and and the filament and uh, let's see and then uh, do the other tube all right I've got the other tube in place and I've let it this one's glowing also that's a good thing and I've let it warm up for a couple of minutes. So let's hit the old test button. Yep, looking good. So I'm going to go ahead and test this one for opens and shorts and test the filament. And we're good to go. It's always a good idea to, when you're doing one of these projects, to test every component you get before soldering it or installing it onto the circuit board so that you know the thing is it works in advance which will save uh, a lot of troubleshooting Let's see. there we go it'll save a lot of troubleshooting when you finally get this thing together um, so I certainly want, always want to test vacuum tubes before you put them in um, and that's what I'm doing with the transformers here next so uh, we'll put this tube tester away, or I finish testing this tube, and then um, um, check the transformers. All right, so I just tested the vacuum tubes, and they checked out perfectly, perfectly good, perfectly fine. Um, it's great how those things can <clears throat> sit in a little box on a shelf for 50 years and 
come out ready to run. I love it. Can't say that for electrolytic capacitors though. Those things don't last. Uh, they'll they'll go bad on their own without even being used. Okay. What we're doing here is <clears throat> I've got my own little novel way of uh, deciding a transformer configuration or I should say the orientation of the transformers relative to each other. Many tube amps such as this Fisher put them side by side. Um, in my opinion yeah, you want the output transformers as far apart as possible so you will see other designs where on one side of the chassis you'll, you'll have one transformer, one output transformer, and then the other one will be on the other side of the chassis as far away as possible. <clears throat> Which I think is a better way. And then in some amplifiers you'll see where the one output transformer is kind of rotated 45 degrees and the other one same thing rotated 45 degrees and you know these are all just just configurations to ultimately ensure as little crosstalk as possible between the two as little coupling by way of magnetic flux between the two um, that's what separates I think High fidelity from mid fidelity and low fidelity is the attention to details like that throughout the design process. Now, granted, I am not building a hi fi amp here, but I do want to. I'm building a lo fi amp, as a matter of fact, but I do want to make it the best it can possibly be. So, what I'm going to do, instead of just putting the amplifiers on the chassis, in the in the traditional way and assuming everything's going to be great these guys because of the cigar box they've got to be relatively well very close to each other so I want to determine the best orientation that produces the least amount of um, coupling between the two um, with respect to the magnetic flux so what I have here, I'm going to show it in diagram form first, and then I'm going to, I've got the thing actually hooked up. So, one transformer, I've got the primary side connected to one kilohertz input sine wave, and the secondary side is uh, loaded with uh, one, of the, one of these 8 ohm dummy loads. The other transformer, okay, so the, this transformer here is going to be this one. And I've got it connected to my function generator directly. The other transformer I have loaded uh, with eight ohms, so the other the other eight ohm resistor um, provides the load. We want to do that because um, we want these transformers, uh, the primaries and the secondaries, uh, behaving as they would in the actual circuit. I won't get into details about that, but um, anyway. But the input to the other transformer, well, there is no input. Uh, it's open circuited. So what I'm going to be doing is looking, measuring off the primary of the other transformer. First, using a little uh, a little amplified speaker right here. So any signal that's going to be present on the primary of this, and the primary is the most sensitive side. So if we can reduce the noise on the primary to as little as possible, then the secondary noise will also be as little as possible. So probably, you know, when I finally get this configuration where I've reduced the noise on the primary to as low as possible, there'll be no audible noise on the secondary. And that's just a function of the fact that the primary has more turns of wire than the secondary, so it's more sensitive to uh, picking up magnetic flux or crosstalk between the two transformers. So first, I'm going to, let's see, I've got, go ahead and turn this, okay, here's my little amplifier. 
hopefully you can hear it and this little guy is hooked up just like this to the open circuited primary of this transformer this is the one with the signal going to it and we're simply going to move these around hopefully none of my connections get disconnected so first I'm going to start with the transformers side by side very close and you could hear that signal go up in tone or in volume uh, that means that we're receiving a lot of crosstalk again this transformer that we're listening to has no signal hooked up to it that tone you're hearing is the tone that's generated by this signal generator going through the other transformer and, and just to show you I'll change the frequency of it okay go back to one kilohertz So it's picking up a lot of crosstalk or a lot of uh, coupling between the two in this configuration. So let me just let me okay. Let's see what happens if I move it, move them further apart. You can hear it go down, down, down. This is why mono block ampl amplifiers, where you, when you have separate, um, completely separate chassis for the left and the right amplifiers, uh, so that they can be separated by distance, is actually superior. It's better but they are more expensive. <clears throat> so um, I cannot, this distance right here, and you know I could keep moving it further and further away and to the point where you'd hear nothing. Uh, there'd be no uh, flux coupling between the two. But that's not practical because I'm dealing with this little tiny box. <clears throat> so we've got to optimize. So let me bring it back. I don't like that. All right, so what if I turn it one ninety degrees relative to the other didn't make much of a difference but again if I move it away it makes a difference so distance is the key but I don't have that luxury um, so what if I put them well, see that's the same thing That's the same thing. Well, what if we go like this? I'm trying to get these things diagonal to each other. So if if I put them like that on the box. What if I turn one? Oops. There we go. That was actually better. Something came dis. There we go. Something got disconnected there. Hold on a second. Something came disconnected. All right, one of my leads got disconnected. All right, so let's see. We know that close is bad. So given the size of my box, they're better off looking something like that. I don't know if turning one 90 degrees It did make a small difference, I think. Hmm. About the same. All right, so we don't want them close. You see what happens? Go like this, away, away. That's how it's going to be. Now, just to show you on the scope, if I can, let me see if I can get get the loud signal here. Hang on a second. 
Okay, I've got the transformers next to each other, and what you're looking at on the scope, uh, let me turn this light off, it'll help, it is the red signal, is, uh, I'm going to turn the volume up and down from the signal generator, the red signal is the signal that's going into the, um, to this transformer, which is the one that has the signal generator, and the yellow signal is the one that is, uh, uh, it's the other transformer that has no input, but we're just listening to the uh, signal that's induced on the primary. So I'm going to do the process of moving and when I move it away, and when I move it to its optimal position, it's much better. You get close again, uh, you can see that the uh, amplitude goes up. So I have decided on this configuration. So probably we'll have one tube here and the other tube over there. So kind of like in an X shape. Now granted, this uh, we're listening to the primary. We're listening to the primary, which is the most sensitive side. So I guarantee you, you know, um, I'm, I'm going to hook the this little audio amplifier and leave everything the same but hook this up to the secondary now across the 8 ohm load and we should hear nothing. I'm just uh, tweaking this, listening to the most sensitive side to, to, to get a feel for what's best and then uh, you know once that's optimized the uh, secondary which is what we hook up to the speaker should be uh, noise free. So let me go ahead and switch that around. Okay, <clears throat> alright I've got it switched around so that the uh, amplified speaker Again, on their transformer under test, we have it open circuited on the primary, and our amplified speaker is now across the 8 ohm load. And just as before, the volume on the amplified speaker is in the same place, and there's hardly a sound. There is a slight, you can hear it, very slight sound, but um, not nearly as high in amplitude, and nothing is showing on the scope. I've moved the scope over too, it's just noise. Um, so I suspect that with the residual one kilohertz tone that's coming through the amplifier is probably uh, coming through a wire somewhere and not uh, by virtue of the amp because there's nothing, nothing showing on the scope. Even when I move this, even when I move them close, so the tone stays about the same. So there's nothing really. So this is a good configuration, just like that. Just wanted to show you how I did it. I don't know. Um, I'm not a professional amp builder, and I, you know, I'm just a hobbyist, so I don't know if this is um, how it's done. This is how I've done it in the past. By the way, this little amplified speaker thing, it's got a little probe. Basically, here's the probe stick for it, and it's got a little negative alligator clip. And the positive side of the probe is a, is a nail, and it goes through a mono 3.5 millimeter uh, jack cable into the amplified speaker. This was something I built um, that I saw on YouTube. A fellow on YouTube uh, talked about how to make it, and it's a little probe you can use to probe signals. Um, you know, it's iso it's a battery powered, so it's isolated, um, and you can touch it to uh, trace signals through a tube amp uh, audibly rather than you know have look, having a look at your scope. It's kind of cool. I built it. I'll, I'll put the link up uh, if I can find it um, to that guy's video. I don't even, I forget the name of the person who did it, but um, I was intrigued by it and I built it and it works. It's kind of cool. It's kind of nice to be able to probe around and hear things instead of having to you know look up and look, look back. Um, to trace signals and find out where they come to an abrupt end uh, to find out where the open circuit is, so to speak. Okay, so I am done for the night. I might uh, go ahead and mount one of these, maybe both transformers on the box. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that, get them mounted up and uh, see what they look like. I've probably already cut a couple holes uh, in the box that I don't need. But that's why I'm using the cigar box to prototype it. 
Um, maybe I'll go ahead and get those transformers mounted up and show you what that looks like and call it a night. <clears throat> okay. I mounted one of the transformers and the other one will be mounted here and we'll have one tube there and then one back there. Maybe. Although I could have the transformer here and put the two tubes next to each other there. Might do that, but I'm not going to mount the other transformer tonight because I just I realized I remembered that you know these are really cheap transformers. They were a very good bargain, and they work, and they measured out just fine, but um, and they were inexpensive. And these little end caps right here that cover the windings were rattling a little bit. They were kind of they kind of just float around, and they're, they're they're secure, but they kind of just float around. Now this one was actually pretty tight. This one here was a little loose, and I noticed when um, I could actually hear a signal through it. But when I clamped with my fingers, it went away. So it was causing a resonance of this thing, this uh, mechanical resonance. So I went ahead and put some adhesive. I filled the gaps on all sides. You can see it right here, this white stuff. <clears throat> it's going to dry uh, clear. But I went ahead and put some adhesive on there to just hold it nice and tight to prevent mechanical noise. And so, as a result, while that's drying, I'm not going to mount the other transformer. So, done for the night. Probably go ahead and turn this, turn this light on and get some heat on these things while they're drying. Um, <clears throat> so, that's probably a good enough for tonight. Got made some progress. Um, I'll pick up uh, when I'm ready to get started again. Probably a couple days from now. Um, well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Good night.